is poppin' y'all, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're taking a look at another anime review. Today we're taking a look at Trigun Stampede, which is an anime which came out all the way back in the 1980s, but got remastered here in 2023 to follow the new Dragon Ball sort of 3D anime animation style. And I have recently watched all 12 episodes. Each episode is at 23 minutes per episode, and it's 12 episodes, you can easily watch it in one day like I did. And I've been recently getting on these sort of 12 episode animes. They're very easy to watch, easy to digest, easy to get into, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. And I think they do so good. And I'm an avid sort of, like, I'm all for these very short anime series. And I hope that we get more in the future. I know a good series can be long and we get a lot more lore and details about it. However, I think a good little chill cooldown series of like 12 episodes is really good to break up anime fatigue and really good to sort of break up a day or so if you have like only one day free to watch a show. But let's get into it. When the Stampede, the Vash the Stampede is a gunman on the run with a six billion double dollar bounty on his head. That's all the description you get from Google, so I'm going to give you the rundown of the story. We have two news reporters traveling this desert planet trying to find a scoop on this Vash the Stampede character, Vash the Typhoon character, and they inevitably find him tied up by a load of bandits. They free him and take him to the nearby village, who they, obviously they love him, they want him to help. They help him outrun outlaws, they help him fight a mad scientist, they help him fight a bomber, and then his brother turns up, and all that happens in roughly the first three episodes. We then go on a hunt, following his brother all the way to July, which is a place not a month, which I was confused about. I thought they were, like, chasing him till July, like, that's how long the trip would take. No, there is an actual place called July. So, they start travelling across this massive desert planet with minimal water, and they need these plants to survive. These plants can sort of create matter and basically create water for people to drink, create food for people to eat, and basically help humanity survive on this desert planet. So, they're on their quest, on the road, driving around, and they meet a new character, um, which is the Punisher, who is basically a guy who sort of mourns the dead, sort of puts them to rest, and he and this little kid were in a gas station that got eaten by a giant worm. Very Dune-like. Very earthworm, sandworm from Dune, eat them all, and they have to work their way out of it, and they get out of it, they survive, and it turns out the little kid that they tried to rescue was actually the one controlling the big worm, and he's made out of these worm creatures. They call them worm, but they're not actually worms. They're like massive dragonfly fuck-off things, and they're very ugly and very gross, and it's very weird that they call them worms. They call stuff very weird names. We then continue on our quest, on our journey. We have hired this gunman, and we go to the next place, which is completely ran off wind power, which um, there is minimal to no wind on this planet, so it's a very very shitty place to live on this planet and we meet another one of uh, the doctor's sort of inventions hybrids humanoid robots humanoid experiments and it is a kid who vash promised to protect but who didn't fulfill that promise and he turned into this big buff brute which cross guy killed which punisher killed and vash was very upset about it they fell out they continued their journey and the news reporters drop them off at this big ship, which would take them all the way to July. We then have the Punisher's younger brother, who then appears and starts fighting them on this ship, being controlled by the scientist, and we end up having him running away. We then have a car chasing the massive boat, like this Noah's Ark Titanic type thing that's going across the massive sand ocean, and he is basically a telepath and he's breaking the boat to cause some trouble. We also have the two reporters sneaking back on board the boat because they don't actually want to leave Vash behind. We have them teaming up again and they split up once more to fight the big bad. They go into July and they take their two separate routes to take out the big bad which is Vash's brother Knives and we have two of them going to the bottom, two of them going to the top. But Punisher leaves Vash, and Vash gets captured, Punisher gets his payment and bounces, and the old news reporter dies, the young reporter takes his gun and continues his quest, saves Vash from being captured, and 
the power that Vash holds inside him was taken out, put into this purple cube, and now him and his brother are fighting for it, and him and his brother are basically flying around like super gods, and he shoots the energy into the sky, massive sky beam, as expected, and kills his brother in the sky beam. He then is now living on the run, the girl is now a full-fledged news reporter, and I don't actually know what happened to the cross guy, but that is basically the story. I thought it was a very good story. Very detailed, very... For, for only 12 episodes, there was a lot to cover here, and this story was a pretty action-packed story, and it didn't feel like 12 episodes. It felt like a very long story, it felt like a movie. It was a really, really good story, and I loved all the little detail. I loved the characters returning, the plot twist characters, which you didn't really expect, and then some of the other plot twists which didn't really hit. Like, as soon as I saw the guy with the um, cross, with, with the massive cross, I knew he was a bad guy. I knew he was working for the enemy. I knew he was going to double, double cross Vash. But I thought it'd be like a situation where it's like he doesn't want to double cross him anymore because he spent time with him, got to know him, and they're actually good buddies now. So he doesn't want to double cross him, so he's going to be on the same team as him. But no, that was where I was wrong. He was working for the bad guy, and he actually did work for the bad guy and took the money and left. So, you know, that's that's what that was. Um, I was very disappointed that he actually took the money and left. I thought he'd be a good boy and uh, be a hero and help Vash, but no. We also have the brother-sibling rivalry going on throughout this, and I thought that was really cool and really interesting, seeing how they're both in the same position, but they've taken it in opposite directions. It is a very common trope where brothers sort of split off like this and take what the situation they've both been through and taken in opposite directions. One of them being a lot positive and a lot more optimistic and outlooking on life, and the other one closing themselves down, seeing everyone as a threat and taking them all on and trying to take down civilization. It's a very overused trope, but I liked it here because it felt very special and unique to those two. What these two have been through cannot be linked back to anyone else. Because these two are so special, it makes it that much more impactful, makes it that much more sort of interesting and also thought-inducing and worrying. Because, obviously, his brother is hunting him down to get his power, which he needs both of their powers combined to unlock his true goal. So, because it is only Vash that he can have, it puts a lot more pressure on Vash, puts a lot more struggle and issues onto him that he really doesn't really need right now. And he's travelling with a lot of friends, and he's so positive, so happy, so goofy, so silly, and he always tries his hardest to save everyone, he doesn't want anyone to die, if he can, he would rather sacrifice himself than anyone else, and I like that, I thought it was really heartwarming and nice, how everyone was saying, no, we can't save everyone, and then he would go and prove them wrong, he would find a way, and um, protect everyone, which was really sweet and really kind, it's just, his way of thinking, being part plant that could, like, find a way to help everyone and think on his feet. He's just so quick and on the ball with everything, which he's just, like, a plant. So he's thinking way, way, way quicker. So he can do all this stuff and do all these plans before anyone else can even think of it. We also see the contrast in all the different people. And I like that when we have a team with contrasting, sort of, character models, like, character designs and also contrasting character personalities. Like with the old men, he doesn't want to go with them, he's old, he's lazy, he's, he's a drunk, he doesn't really want to do this, he just wants to get on with his job and get paid. The young girl has a new avid outlook on life, she's excited, she's ready, she wants to go on all this adventure, do this, that and the other, she's already hyped and pumped up. We then have the Punisher, who's like been through a load of trauma, been through a load of experimentation, and he doesn't want to do that again, and he's basically being blackmailed into working for this company, or they're going to take more orphans from his orphanage. Then we have Vash, who is very optimistic, tries to help everyone, no matter how much they hurt him, and all these characters work so well together, and we can see how they bounce off each other, and how their sort of mentalities can affect them, and how they can think in so many different ways, which I think is really cool. The art style for this is pretty interesting. I'm not too sure how I feel about it just yet. It's like this 3D 
mixed with 2D elements. It's not as good as like Spider-Verse animation style. I didn't expect it to be. But it, that's what it's trying to replicate, I do believe. Like the 3D with 2D styles to it. And I'm going to be honest, it isn't the most beautiful art style. It doesn't look that good. I think some of it would have been better translated into 2D rather than 3D. However, I do still think it looks good. It's a weird mix. It's how they're trying to film Dragon Ball right now. All the Dragon Ball anime is starting to go with this sort of 3D route. And it's making them all look younger. And I feel like this was a test run for this animation style. And I'm going to be honest, it does look good. I just believe that it not every anime will work in this 3D art style. Especially with Dragon Ball, which have had for so long in the 2D art style, trying to make its way into 3D. I just don't think it's going to work. But honestly, Trigon Stampede, a very good anime. Please go watch it. You can find it on Funimation or Crunchyroll. I don't remember which one. But... It is a very good anime, easy watching one day, very quick, very action-packed story. To say you can watch it all in one day, it feels like an adventure that takes like a week to watch, and I like that. It, they filled a lot in, but they didn't skip over any parts, they didn't drag anything out, and they didn't quickly rush over things either. It felt like a good, solid 12-episode series, and that's what I like. So I am going to give it a 9 out of 10, only dropping it one point by the animation style. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this YouTube video. See you all next one. Have a nice day, and goodbye. And if you want to watch any other anime, please do leave it in the comments down below to leave me any suggestions on what you want me to watch next. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed. Bye-bye.